Hello, I feel totally disenfranchised at the moment because I want a complete out-and-out Brexit. I want a no deal. I want no ties with the European Union, maybe a trade deal down the line. We had a candidate. We now don't. I can't vote for Mr Johnson because his deal is spending £39 billion to sort of take us out, but we're still completely tied with no say in the European Union. I can't vote for Mr Corbyn because he's got a magic money tree. (laughs) And I can't vote for the Green Party because they want to dance around trees all day and hug them all day long. (laughs) I'd love to to have you guys on board, but I feel Mr Farage, especially the fact now that he's not standing either, I, I kind of feel totally let down. Well, I, I'm very sorry what, about... What do, what do I do? I'm very sorry that you feel let down and you're not the only one who feels let down. I don't Indeed. feel my views being represented, to be fair. Yeah. Indeed, I feel, in a way, slightly disenfranchised myself because I live in Fulham and um, I had an excellent candidate in Fulham who's now been stood down. Um, you're and, a Brexit Party spokesperson and MEP who feels disenfranchised. Well, I, I'm, I'm in Fulham, so I can't vote for my own party. And, you know, I've just been candid. That is, that, that's a fact. And, um, and that's your leader who did that. He made that well, decision. Well, what Nigel did, and I was just saying this to Tom actually in the break, you know, what Nigel did is something that is really highly unusual. The Brexit Party, like any other entity, is an organism which wishes to promote itself and grow. And what Nigel did was to put the national interest ahead of the interests of the organism And he recognised that actually the only way to ensure that we don't get a Labour-led sort of nightmare of a government was to effectively stand down in these 370 seats against the Tories. Why not stand down in Labour marginals? Why not stand down in in Labour seats where the Conservative and Labour vote is quite close? Why split it? Well, we had to have some mechanism by which we drew a line. 317 seats is one hell of a head start for the Tories. And actually, Labour Party voters are much more likely to vote for us than they are for Tory. And there are about 130-odd seats in this country that haven't returned a Tory MP for 100 years. And actually what the Tory party should have done was stood down against us in those seats to get a proper leave majority. Um... Anyway, be that as it may, uh, Nigel did, I think, what was the right thing for the country to ensure we don't get a remain orientated government. Greg, do you think it's the right thing for the country? Not, not at all by any means, because, as I say, Mr Johnson's deal is not Brexit as such, because we end up paying £39 billion. We're still half in, half out. We don't get to make our own trade deals as such. And I don't see how, if the Brexit party does get five or ten people in Parliament, how that is going to be enough of a sway to get Mr Johnson to change his deal, because he says his deal is superb, it's a wonderful deal, yeah. it's not going to change, and he's going to rush that through. So that's not... <laughs> I, I do agree. That's it, not it, Brexit, and we're still tied in. It beggars belief that he describes it as a wonderful deal. When the Ben Act was passed, which he called the Surrender Act, um, he presumably called it the Surrender Act because he knew he'd ha- then have to surrender to the EU. And in but many you're, respects, but you're in a sense you're advocating for people to vote for Boris Johnson. Well, deal. actually, Boris Johnson has made two significant changes to his position um, since the withdrawal agreement was agreed. His new withdrawal agreement I, was agreed. I, I, I do want to come on to that in yeah. just a moment, but to pick up on on Greg's point, the the, the, Bre- you, the Brexit Party's cut its nose off to spite its face. It's standing down in the wrong places. It's not giving people like Greg an option to vote. You feel disenfranchised for, <laughs> from your own party because of a decision your leaders made. And if you are able to only get one or two or or five MPs, how are you going to be able to put any pressure on a Boris Johnson government, should he get in, in order to affect Brexit? Well, I think if if we get five or ten MPs, I think there's been something seismic gone on in British politics. And probably we do, we, we will then hold a significant amount of influence in the House of Parliament. And But you, you're, you're on record as saying Boris Johnson, if he has an outright majority, if uh, he has his outright, party will yeah. not be able to put pressure on the Prime Minister. Yeah, if we get five to ten seats, he won't have an outright majority. Something's, something's wrong with the polls. You know, I heard the polls just before coming on with you just now, Tom, and they were predicting, you know, a squeeze of the Brexit party and indeed the Liberal Democrats. So if we get the seats that I've been talking about, then actually I think probably we're in the realms of a minority Tory government or something along those lines. And, fi- and, and five MPs will be enough to... Well, Ten, to turn around the ten juggernaut. DUP MPs was enough to really, you know, hold the direction of travel for quite some time. And, to, you know, we would be together with the DUP and others um, in Parliament who we might be able to sway our way. So I think, you know, it's all to be played for and nothing should be judged mm-hmm. until we get to the 13th of December.